Hello, welcome to this week's video, which is all about adult survivors of narcissistic parents. Quite an unexplored topic, though quite a profound topic, and there are, believe it or not, quite a lot of people who, uh, adults wandering around out there, who have experienced this. It's quite a powerful and demeaning, devaluing um, process that um, children go through with narcissistic parents and as adults it, the fallout from it can be quite devastating um, and really really affect the rest of um, said person's life without some kind of intervention there is not a lot that, um, that one person can do by themselves if they have narcissistic uh, parents and especially if they are still in contact with narcissistic parents. So for many adults, um, once they are in the adult world and they are entering into other relationships, they will often compound uh, the original issue that they have, which is if they have narcissistic parents, they will find a narcissistic par uh, partner. They will find someone who is abusive and manipulating and devaluing and demeaning. Because as a child, this is what most children with narcissistic parents will have gone through. And I'm talking about the narcissistic parents who are devaluing, demeaning and abusive, manipulative and hostile. If you um, have a narcissistic parent who manages to somehow manipulate you into becoming a mini-me version of, you, of themselves, chances are the fallout uh, is not quite, I wouldn't say not as devastating, but you are going to have lost your identity completely and you will have taken on another one which will be a mimic of the narcissistic parent which is the ultimate compliment to the narcissistic parent to have a miniature version of themselves who idolizes and adores them and looks up to them. The narcissistic parent who's more devaluing um, and demeaning, uh, there's a lot more sinister stuff going on. That doesn't mean that the um, child who mimics and has become a miniature version does not will not have some issues uh, later on down the line in their adult life when um, the identity or the mask falls away if indeed it ever does um, the chances are they will find someone weaker than them to be with who will adore them and um, admire them and give them all that adoration in order to prevent uh, the mask falling off, if you like, the false self, self the, sh the shell that's been built around a vulnerable child to prevent that being penetrated or shattering in any way. So mo moving along with children who are at the mercy of the abuse from a narcissistic parent in terms of devaluing and demeaning uh, behaviours, the child will try to please the parent. The child will try to mimic the parent. The child will try everything it has in its power in order to please said parent. So this child is highly likely to become a people pleaser. But in order to survive the environment that the child is in, they will also probably switch off all of their emotions and switch off connection with the self because the self is the thing that's under attack from the parent from the narcissistic parent so they will switch it off they will not want to connect to it because that's being devalued so there's that kind of if i step out and away from myself if i separate myself away from myself that keeps getting attacked i don't i'm unseen so often this kind of not split personality but this kind of uh, yeah, I guess schizophrenic kind of schizoid kind of approach to it may well occur um, in some of the more severe cases. So you kind of get this dual personality, not like I say in the in the realms of schizophrenia or or uh, multiple personality disorders. Although there's an element of that when you really really look into that stuff, there is an element of the other personality kicks in in order to look after the other aspect of self or detach from the other aspect of self, like I said, that is being persecuted. So it gets very, very complex and maybe more, more complex than is possible in this video alone. So the child in the effort to gain some kind of love and admiration from the parent will end up playing different roles, as I said, trying very, very hard to please and will lack a, an, um, like a self-identity and any particular self 
worth, they will become a people pleaser. This obviously causes problems in future relationships. And so what will happen in their adult relationships is they may well be quite cold, they may well people please, they may well may well morph into different kind of personalities, if you like, depending on different relationships. They will start to wear masks because that's how they've learned to survive. What will also happen inside is that these adults who have parents who are narcissistic and abusive with it, they will have um, this kind of complete confusion and this dissonance about their parent. You know, it's it, because it kind of goes against the grain of nature in some respects. It's like, that's my parent who is apparently all loving and, you know, supposed to love me and all the rest of it. And actually is quite devaluing and demeaning and persecutory and abusive and all the rest of it. So they will have this massive conflict within themselves once they move as children, as adolescents, and definitely as adults. And there's this kind of, there may well have been, there's always this kind of attractive, again, we always need to connect, we always need to attach. There will be this massive attraction towards, if I can win them over, then everything that happened in history in our history doesn't mean anything because I got that love for them. So they will often keep trying, keep trying to please, and they will find this will affect relationships because when they're in a new relationship, let's say a romantic relationship or friendships, the narcissistic parent starts up and it will cause problems within the relationship. You know, actually, I don't like your parents. Your parents are quite abusive. I don't like the way you become around them. You become weak and this and that and the other. And of course, that's another persecutory voice or certainly that's how you will take it, possibly. Um, so it causes problems within the relationships that you're having if you're attempting to have any close relationships or intimate relationships, because there are these figures in the background who sometimes come into the foreground who will attempt to disrupt and destroy. This can also go further on if you then end up having children yourself, and now your parents are grandparents, and they may well be totally fine with your kids. Some of them aren't. Um, they may start to devalue your own children because they're a product of you, chances are they will definitely devalue you as a parent via criticizing your children's behavior and using that as a mark of your lack of parenting skills or your inability to act as a parent, as a wife, as a husband, you know, as a spouse, um, and as a parent. Your, these narcissistic parents will continue this devaluing process. I'm not really going to go into why they do it in this video. There are other videos I've got about the development of a narcissist. I'll put one up here and how these people continue. Um, again, no perceived threat can ever get through that fragile sense of self, that false self that's been built around them. So they persecute to feel better. They persecute to push you away. Now, many of these adult survivors of narcissistic parents will have certain behavioral traits, maybe they're into drink and drugs, maybe they're always running away, maybe they need lots of space, maybe they're unable to get close to their partner particularly, maybe they're unable to get close to their own children. They will have definitely have a critical voice going on inside their head over everything that they do. Nothing will be because of their own, uh, they won't allow anything to be because of their own achievements, their own kind of um, their own abilities, if that makes sense. Let's say you get a new job, you do well in some kind of sport or something like that. There will be that voice in your head which will turn around and say, yeah, but it's not because of you, it's because they felt sorry for you. Or it's because they were desperate, or it's because the person before you didn't get the job because they had to back out, so they just had to default to you, but they'll get rid of you soon enough. Or the sport felt sorry for you, it was a, it was a bad day for the other people. There'll be some voice which will be in your head which will um, have will push you down somehow. Now I'm going to come back to this because the first the first uh, step in working with this, in healing from this, is to actually acknowledge that this happened to you. And this is the hardest one. This is this acknowledgement that my parents are toxic to me. It doesn't matter whether they're narcissists or not. My parents are toxic to me. Every time I interact with them, it brings nothing but misery. 
and when I was a child, I was miserable, and the fallout from this is now showing, and I need to wake up to this. I need to actually acknowledge this. As painful as this is, I have loyalty to them, I have love, I desire love to, from them, all of this stuff, but the reality is, they are abusive. They are demeaning, they are persecutory, and I don't need them in my life anymore. That's the first step, and it's often one of the hardest steps to do. This is the first step on your healing journey as an adult survivor of um, narcissistic parental abuse. Then there are other steps to take, and those would be therapy, help groups, journaling, shadow work, empty chair work, inner child work, equine assisted therapy, there are numerous therapies out there. You know, there's the there's breathing exercises, there's um, the ice plunges, um, because you will be stuck in survival mode. Definitely your nervous system will be stuck in survival mode. There will be yoga, there will be meditation, there will be many, many things that you can try and you can work on to help you move past this. And one of, I would say one of the most important ones, two of the most important ones, sorry, would be, first of all, embracing the inner child. There is an inner child in you which is so wounded, so beaten down. And I would suggest doing this with a therapist, the empty chair technique, or an expression through art and creativity and music. But that inner child needs nurturing, and you maybe need to, uh, it can be very beneficial to physically imagine that inner child in front of you and begin to parent that version of yourself, be you five years old, six years old, seven, eight, nine, 10, 13, whatever age feels right to you, where things started to get a little bit odd um, or really start to take effect. Take that child, imagine that child outside of yourself that is a part of your psyche that did not, there's a like an arrested development there if you like, they stayed at that age, they stayed at that age and wounded whilst you grew. So now you're growing as kind of like, you know, with this fragmented psyche. Like I said, I'm not trying to get into multiple personality disorder, but it's like a part of you broke away and stayed stunted and then there'll be another part of you which broke away and stayed stunted and these parts need integrating back together one way to do that is like i say inner child work learn to play again learn to take some control of life also acknowledge your achievements acknowledge your accomplishments acknowledge start to regain power and really really work with it and lastly just for this video i'm going to come back to this critical voice in your head now what we do is we have a perception of other people in our lives. And this perception of these figures is built up within our imagination. I'm kind of going along a kind of gestalt union approach here. So for instance, your perception of me is gonna be very different to someone else's perception of me. Now, they're gonna both contain core elements, but they're gonna be dressed by your life experiences, their life experiences, and how they interpret things I say and do. And this goes for all figures in your life, your parents, your siblings, your children even, your friends. There is an element of reality in the figure that you have in your head. The ob they are an object in your head, in your imagination, in your psyche. They reside in there, and then you dress them. This is often why within relationships with people we kind of like get really surprised at certain behaviors towards the end or at the end. They were there all the time. We just built a fantasy out and we kept those bits out. And we put some other bits on there instead because it was easier to keep to the, the fantasy image that we have. And it's the same with narcissistic parents. And it's the same with the critical voice in our head. Now what's happened here to try to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about the your parents if your parents were narcissistic narcissists and abusive they will have devalued you demeaned you persecuted you put you down all the time there is a theme to these messages that they keep giving you to this feedback that you keep getting from the environment and what happens is that children will and adults can as well interject internalize the voice of the other and then once it's internalized, the damage is really done. 
because now this is a figment in your, this is an object, a persecutory figure in your psyche. So, for instance, you no longer as an adult need your parents present when you are, I don't know, let's say, um, trying to do something with your kids or trying to go for a promotion at work or trying to engage with your partner because there will be this voice in your head which is an internalization of their voice which will tell you you're no good. You've just got this because of the sympathy vote. They don't love you really. They're just trying to please you. They're just trying to get rid of you. They're just trying to shut you up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The thing is, here is, and it's a really, really hard concept to get one's head around, especially if it is happening to you, is that that comes from within. You didn't need the parent physically standing there to give you that message. They don't need to be there. They could be dead. But that voice, that voice is in there. But that voice is coming from within your imagination. So now your your psyche is kind of part of your psyche, this part that you created by internalizing the messages from your persecutors. Now you've internalized it. It's taken on a life of its own and now it's persecuting and it doesn't need anybody behind it. It's, but it's within you and here's the key. If it's within you, you can get it out of you. And again, there's empty chair work, there's expressing it. There's this, also this kind of conscious uh, effort to actually say out loud, hey, you know what? Thanks for sharing your thoughts, but they're no longer relevant. In literally talking to yourself like that, talking back to the critical voice, you're no longer needed. Adios. Not relevant. It's from the past. Do one. Disappear. Jog on. Whatever it is that you need to say to silence it, because chances are you will never fully, fully get rid of it because it was internalized at such a young age. It would take a very, very long time to actually eradicate it. It is part of your psyche, but you can counter it. You can have a counter voice. Make that counter voice strong. Vocalize it literally out loud. Hey, shut up. Enough, because I know I'm good at this. I know I'm doing well at this, and I know my partner loves me, and I know my kids are enjoying my interactions, and I know I deserve that job. You're from the past. Go. And it's literally doing stuff like that that is going to diminish that voice and stop it from coming forward so often and with so much power. Second to that, you can you also kind of really, really need to consider completely breaking away from narcissistic parents if they're still alive. Absolutely cutting contact. It will be one of the most healing things and empowering things you ever do. It will also probably be one of the most uh, difficult things to do, to sever that bond, to sever that hope that you will ever get what you want from them. Because if you are in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, and you haven't got it by now, you're never going to get it. That's the reality of it. You need to get it from within yourself. Like I say, go back, reparent your inner child, get rid of the critical voice as much as you can. Get rid of your parents physically, well, not physically, I mean, don't, you know, commit a crime, don't kill them. But actually to kind of say, remove them from your life. I don't need contact from you anymore. You bring me nothing. My life is over here and it's away from you. And like I said, it's one of the most empowering things you can do. So I hope that sheds a little bit of light on the subject. It is a vast and complex subject and there are many, many more outlets. I have got a couple of videos about this already. Um, and in the meantime, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.